Good morning and welcome to the Salvation Army Kamloops. It is an exciting day today. We have a soldier enrollment, well actually two, as well as a baby dedication and it's Pentecost Sunday. So we have lots to celebrate today. We're going to start off with our call to worship taken from Psalm 8. It says, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies. To silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon of the stars, which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the fields and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us pray. God, we just thank you for today. We thank you for the joy that comes with each new morning. We thank you for this opportunity to come and to worship you this morning. Lord, I pray that your hand will be upon this service, that your words would be heard, that we would be willing to step out in faith and follow the directions that you have called us in. Lord, we thank you for the celebrations that get to take place this morning. Lord, please be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning, why don't you join us for our opening song? And our opening song will then be followed by Daniel and Jessica bringing us their favorite scripture.
So for our enrollment today, um, Corey and Kelly had asked us to share our favorite scripture and why to us it is our favorite scripture. Um, for me, when I was thinking about this, I was just thinking about how, you know, there's so many amazing scriptures in the Bible that really, truly, the Bible is just full of living truth. It's living truth that makes you free, that will, that fills you with power. It's, it's so remarkable, but um, one of my favorite ones that I probably find myself quoting more often than not is this. It's John 17, verse 3. Jesus says, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That key word being, know, that they may know you. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not just simple religion in the form of just showing up to church on Sunday. That's not what it's all about. It's not about just simply following rules and do a list of do this is and don't do that, but it's about knowing him intimately, walking with him, following him. That word know in the Greek actually means the, in the most intimate way that you can know a person. So God desires to know us intimately as a father knows his daughter or his son. One of the verses that has um, been so important to me in the last two years is Philippians 4.8. Uh, it says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And this has been... Um, such a key verse for me because a lot of times the battle is in our mind and so if we can remember God and come back to him and come back to his truths and come back to um, what we know to be true and be thankful um, that's where the freedom lies it's it's all about him it's all about God and so um, yeah I find myself um, coming back to the scripture and that God reminds me of it time and time again and there's also this little song that I like too and so I sing that to myself as well with these words and so that's Philippians 4, 8. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failure, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubles. Whoa, you are the peace.
song we did, uh, especially someone had asked for it this week, and so hopefully you're watching this week, and uh, hopefully you, you enjoy that song. Thank you. 
us this morning. There's nothing more than the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let's sing together. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are the way.
God, we just give you praise. We give you glory. We cry out and we say, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, move amongst your people. May we sense your presence, Lord. It's the incredible part about your Holy Spirit. It's not limited by bricks and mortar, that wherever we are this morning, your Holy Spirit is with us. That we can experience the Holy Spirit sitting on our couch or outside or in the church, wherever we are, that your Holy Spirit is present. So God, today we just cry out for this Pentecost Sunday, Holy Spirit, come. May your people, may believers around the world be filled with your Holy Spirit on this day, reminded of your goodness. Oh God, may we cry out to you in these days. Continue to long for a fresh anointing, fresh empowering by the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Sing those words one more time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Let's sing that again. Yeah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory. This morning, we're really excited that we're able to not just hear from Daniel and Jessica as they've shared scripture with us this morning, uh, but we're really excited that we're able to enroll them as the newest members of the Salvation Army Kamloops. And uh, that's what we're going to do at this time. They've been busy doing things to prepare for this, and Kelly's going to remind us of what they've done. So I know that it's been a long time coming. It was actually in the fall that you did some work on this, and it's been ongoing conversation since. But there are some key things that in order to become a soldier that you need to do. And so those are you've professed salvation through faith in Christ. And you now acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior. You have studied the doctrines, principles, and evangelistic witnesses of the army as embodied in the soldier's covenants. And you have been accepted by our senior pastoral care council in accordance with the orders and regulations. And you have signed your soldier's covenant. We're going to share a scripture with you from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13 to 18. We find these words. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against you, your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ died for our sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. At this time, we're going to uh, read for you the doctrines of the Salvation Army. We believe that the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments were given by inspiration of God and that they only constitute the divine rule of Christian faith and practice. We believe that there is only one God who is infinitely perfect, the creator, preserver, and governor of all things, and who is the only proper object of religious worship. We believe that there are three persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, undivided in essence and co-equal in power and glory. We believe that in the person of Jesus Christ, the divine and human natures are united so that he is truly and properly God and truly and properly man. We believe that our first parents were created in a state of innocency, but by their disobedience, they lost their purity and happiness. And that in consequence of their fall, all men have become sinners, totally depraved, and as such are justly exposed to the wrath of God. We believe that the Lord Jesus Christ has by his suffering and death made an atonement for the whole world so that whosoever will may be saved. We believe that repentance toward God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and regeneration by the Holy Spirit are necessary to salvation. 
We believe that we are justified by grace through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and that he that believeth hath the witness in himself. We believe that continuance in a state of salvation depends upon continued obedient faith in Christ. We believe that it is the privilege of all believers to be wholly sanctified, and that their whole spirit and soul and body may be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in the immortality of the soul, the resurrection of the body, in the general judgment at the end of the world, in the eternal happiness of the righteous, and in the endless punishment of the wicked. All who wish to become soldiers of the Salvation Army are required to sign the Soldier's Covenant. And in doing so, they testify that they worship God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, and they desire to fulfill their membership of his church on earth as a soldier of the Salvation Army. They affirm their belief in the Bible as the word of God and their acceptance of the Salvation Army's Articles of Faith. In the Articles of Faith, we find these. They declare that they will be responsive to the Holy Spirit and seek to grow in grace. They will make the values of the kingdom of God the standard for their lives, showing Christian integrity in their deeds, maintaining Christian ideals in their relationships, and upholding the sanctity of marriage and family life. They will be faithful stewards of all that they have and are. They will abstain from the use of all enslaving substances and harmful activities. They will be active in God's work, both in sharing the gospel and in serving the needy and will contribute financially to its support. They will be true to the principles of the Salvation Army. They witness here today that they freely enter into this covenant, convinced that the love of Christ requires the devotion of their lives to his service for the salvation of the whole world. Is that true? Yeah? Good. Uh, and they declare that their determination by God's help uh, to be true soldiers of the Salvation Army. So, at this time, we ask you this question. Do you, Daniel and Jessica, declare in the presence of God and of the congregation that you undertake by the help of the Holy Spirit to live and work as a true soldier of Jesus Christ and of the Salvation Army, according to the witnesses and promises you make this day? If you raise your right hand, and you say, raise your right hand, and say with me, I do. I do. I do. At this time, we're very excited uh, that we have some special words from our territorial commander, uh, Commissioner Floyd Titt. Today is a great day in the history of the Salvation Army in the Canada and Bermuda Territory. As in, again, one of our Corps, soldiers are being enrolled. The strength of a Salvation Army, like any army, is in its soldiery, in people who say, I am here, I am committed, I am ready to do the battle that needs to be done. Soldiership is not about membership. Soldiership is rather a commitment to live a mission-focused life. I say to you today who are being enrolled as soldiers, God has called you into a relationship with him, and you've accepted that invitation. But more than that, you know that in accepting an invitation to be in relationship with him is to be one who works with him, works in partnership with him in his work to see other people come into a living relationship with him through his son Jesus Christ. It's certainly our prayer, our prayer for you as you take this fresh step of faith, that God will richly bless you in your ministry for him. Let me leave these words with you from Ephesians chapter 6. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. You are God's soldier. He has provided an armor for you to wear, to live your life in faith and in service. May God indeed bless you, soldiers in the Salvation Army, soldiers who are saved to serve that others might be saved. God bless you. Daniel and Jessica, in the name of the Lord whom we love and serve, I accept your declarations and receive you as soldiers of the Salvation Army Kamloops. Woohoo! 
This is where most people would be clapping and cheering, right? <laughs> There's a whole congregation out there. And so I want to give you your uh, Soldier's Covenant, your Articles of War. And so Daniel. Thank you. You can hold those up so that all your people can take pictures and I'm not sure how that works in this <laughs> setting, but we'll make sure we have a picture. Uh, at this time, one final thing, uh, and that's a prayer dedication. And at this time, we have Lieutenant Colonel Jamie Braun, our divisional commander, is going to share with us. Hello, friends. It's a pleasure to be able to greet you today uh, and send this message to the Kamloops Corps. Appreciate all of you and all that you're doing. It gives me an opportunity to say thank you as well to your Corps officers and to the employees and staff and volunteers and all the church members who have really been continuing during these complicated days to live with the mission of the Salvation Army there in the beautiful uh, community of Kamloops. So thanks so much for all you're doing and uh, appreciate also the opportunity to be able to join you today and uh, to share in a prayer for Daniel and Jessica, who we appreciate very much uh, on this uh, occasion of their soldiership uh, enrollment. So we pray the uh, blessing on them and on all of you uh, as you share in worship today. So please join me as I pray. God, our Father, I am grateful today for your blessings, for your goodness, for your presence, which you've promised uh, for us always. And uh, we're grateful, God, for your amazing uh, grace and for your unfailing love and your mercy that's new every day. And so today, uh, on this new day of worship, we uh, give you thanks, especially today for uh, Daniel and Jessica and for their family. Uh, God, I thank you for who they are, that you've created them in, in your image uh, to be your people. And I'm grateful, God, for the calling that you've placed upon their lives that's brought them to this place and that they've been obedient in uh, responding to that calling and you've been equipping them for the call that's theirs. And so, God, I thank you for uh, Daniel and for Jessica today. Uh, and as they take this, st take this step uh, in soldiership, uh, God, I pray that it'll be just uh, an oppor new opportunities that will come uh, in the days ahead. And so, God, I pray your blessing upon them and their family and their ministry. Uh, God, I'm thankful that uh, you have great, enormous opportunity for them in the days ahead that they can't see yet, but you can see. So God, help them to trust as they walk through uh, new doors and new opportunities uh, of ability to be able to serve you in the days ahead, uh, especially there connected to uh, the Kamloops church family. Uh, and God, I just pray that you'll give them a sense of peace and understanding that you go before them, that you have a plan for their lives uh, that's a good one and that's full of blessing and opportunity to serve you and to bring glory uh, to you and to your name. So God, I do uh, thank you for, uh, for them and uh, for their family, for this church family, and I uh, pray that on this occasion, it'll be an opportunity for each one of us, uh, just once again, to consider what it means for us to serve you, to understand what our calling is uh, to be in ministry for you, and pray that you would just continue to guide us uh, and provide wisdom and direction for each one of us in the days ahead. We thank you, God, for your blessings. Amen. God bless you, each one. Now will be the time when we welcome Daniel and Jessica as the newest soldiers of the Salvation Army Kamloops. Uh, maybe you can do hand waves on Facebook or you can, you like, can it. like it or post a heart or a smiley face or tag yourself. Uh, but please encourage them at this time. And thank you. We're so glad that you guys are a part of our church family. <laughs> That's it. Done. Done. Boom. Woo. <laughs> This morning, we just have a few announcements that we want to share. First of all, we have had a few phone calls this week where people stop by and just ask what's happening with our thrift store as well as with church. And I just wanted to let you know, right now, our thrift store is still closed. Church, we're still going to continue to meet like this for a little bit. Some of these decisions have to be evaluated. There are lots of different things to look at. And they're not just local decisions. But some of our closures have come out of our division as well as our territory, um, letting us know that we needed to close. So the decision isn't just ours. As soon as we have more information on those, then we'll make sure we share that with you and we'll let everybody know when things start up again. Last week, we finished off our Partners in Mission sermon series. And as of today, we are just over that $4,000 mark. Our goal this year is $4,400. So we just have a couple hundred dollars left to go to reach that goal. If you haven't um, given to our Partners in Mission this year, please consider dropping off a donation or calling in, letting us know that something is on the way. We would really appreciate that. We want to make sure that we're continuing to serve and continuing to support the work of the Salvation Army around the world. 
Our Bible studies have finished up for right now. However, this Thursday, we'll be doing a coffee check-in. Thursday, 7 p.m. over Zoom. If you haven't got on Zoom yet and you'd like some help with that, please give us a call. We'd love an opportunity just to check in, to see people's faces, and just have a time of fellowship together. Also, this week is the start of something new for some of our kids and teachers in this province. And so our kids are going back to school this week. It isn't mandatory, but there are a number of students that are choosing to go back. And so I would just encourage you this week, as this transition begins, as this re-entry to a new normal starts, that you would keep them in prayer that things aren't going to be the same, things are going to be difficult to try and navigate, whether that be the students or the teachers having to implement those changes. And so please, pray for our schools, pray for our kids, pray for our teachers, pray for the school board as they try and figure out what this means for our kids to continue to learn in this way. This will be happening through to the end of June. Thanks. This morning, we are not only excited that we have been able to enroll Daniel and Jessica as soldiers of our Corps, but we are also excited that we get to dedicate Israel this morning, that as the Salvation Army, we recognize the importance of Christ-centered family life, and we recognize the importance placed on parents um, to raise their kids to know Christ. And so we want to bring Israel before the Lord this morning and thank him for this beautiful gift. And this morning we are going to start with Corey reading a scripture. I'm going to read a scripture this morning from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 25 to 28. They brought the boy, Samuel, to Eli, and Hannah said to him, As surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he shall be given over to the Lord. Amen. In the dedication of this child, you desire to give him fully to God. You wish to thank God for entrusting this precious life into your hands. And you want him to be nurtured in all that is pure, lovely, and honest. To this end, you promise that you will keep from him so far as you are able everything which is likely to harm him in body, mind, or spirit. You also promise that as he grows in wisdom and stature that you will teach him the truths of the gospel, encourage him to seek Christ as Savior, and support him in the commitment of his life of service to God. You must be to him an example of a true Christian. If you are willing to make these promises, I will receive the child in the name of God and on behalf of the Salvation Army. No, I can't actually take them. (laughs) In the name of the Lord and on behalf of the Salvation Army, Kamloops Corps, I receive... Israel James Webster, in recognition of the promises which have been made by his parents this day. This time we're going to have a word of prayer. And normally, obviously, as you already saw, uh, we would get the opportunity to to hold Israel. And uh, we, we look forward to that day when we as a church family can hold him and support them by helping to care for him during church services. Uh, but on this day, we're grateful that we can do this. And I just want to encourage you to send comments, to tag things, post things, uh, to encourage Daniel and Jessica in this time. Maybe you've got a little prayer that you want to post on Facebook today, uh, just to encourage them as they embark on this important journey. And at this time, we're going to pray for them. God, we just thank you so much for Israel. We thank you that he came into this world exactly as you planned, that he is healthy and safe with two incredible parents uh, who love you and love him. And so today we pray that you would anoint them with your Holy Spirit, that they would know what it means to raise a child as you would have him raised, and that they would walk in that way in these days. And so God, we pray a blessing on their family. We pray that you would indeed protect them uh, from things that can harm our children, God, because we know that you love little children and they are so innocent in your eyes. 
And so, God, we pray this day that you would bless Daniel, that you would bless Jessica, and that, of course, you would bless Israel James Webster. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As Daniel and Jessica have made these promises today that they are going to raise Israel in a life that is worthy of the calling God has laid upon him, we also recognize that as a church body, as a congregation, we all play that role. That not only are you all witnesses of this service, of this ceremony this morning, but you also play that active role to walk alongside Daniel and Jessica, to support them to pray for them, to give them words of encouragement on those days when you see that they had some sleepless nights and are just struggling. That God, we have a church around us, a body of believers um, that are here to support and to help raise Israel in the way that you have called him to live. And so I just want to challenge you this morning as the congregation, as you are watching, to keep them in your prayers to give them those words of encouragement, and to pray about what your role in Israel's life is. As we close today, we leave you with one final charge, and I give you these words. I charge you to care for Israel in the name of the Lord and to keep the promises that you have made concerning him this day. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we have a certificate for you that you can keep just to remember um, today and remember how you have dedicated Israel. Thank you. Out of 
It's been uh, great to have you all here today. What a great day of celebration. We've celebrated uh, new birth uh, in Israel. We've celebrated spiritual commitments from Daniel and Jessica. And we, of course, celebrate the new relationship that we have with God uh, as a result of Pentecost and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So we've had a wonderful morning so far, and I just want to take a few moments at this time to just kind of talk a little bit, uh, to give some time uh, to the Holy Spirit, to give some time to the Word this morning. And uh, if you'd like, you can turn with me to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. So of course, this will be a Sunday uh, that we talk about the story in Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit came for the first time on the disciples, and this morning we're going to look at a passage from John 16, uh, where Jesus is actually foretelling, talking about what's about to happen when the Holy Spirit comes. So if you've got that, it's John 16, verse 7 to 14. Follow along as I read. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment, in regard to sin because men do not believe in me, in regard to righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and in regard to judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. Amen. Why don't we pray together? God, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you uh, for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for this great Sunday of celebration, and we pray that in these moments we would receive from you again. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So as Jesus was preparing for his own death, uh, he took the time to prepare the disciples for his leaving. Uh, He knew that this would be difficult for them. And he shares with them, he tells them that he has to go. It's significant for him to leave uh, because he must leave in order for the Holy Spirit to come. And this morning, I want to talk a little bit about the significance of the Holy Spirit coming. Uh, I, I found this quote, and I believe it does a great job of bringing it together. It's from David Jenkins, a contributor uh, to Christianity.com. 
He wrote these words. The Holy Spirit today works through Christians to sanctify the people of God and accomplish his will of saving the lost and building up Christians in local churches. The power of the Holy Spirit convicts, teaches, equips, and empowers Christians to grow in grace and spread the gospel to the nations, to the glory of God. And so we're just going to take a few minutes and unpack this quote because I believe it provides us with this wonderful link between the commitment that Daniel and Jessica have made this morning and the arrival of the Holy Spirit on that first Pentecost. So we've got these four words that we're going to talk about this morning. Uh, The power of the Holy Spirit convicts, teaches, equips, and empowers. And so we begin with convicts. If you turn uh, to that scripture we looked at this morning already, John 16, 8, you find that John writes uh, that when he comes, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Uh, You know, our very own awareness of our sinful condition is actually a sign that the Holy Spirit is at work within us. And that's good news to know that the Holy Spirit is in us. Uh, You know what else is good news? Is that this takes some pressure off us. Because, you know, I didn't really think about the Holy Spirit's job as being to convict people. And when we do, it takes a lot of pressure when it comes to our calling from God. Uh, In Matthew 28, Jesus says, go into all the earth preaching the good news. And we find the same instructions in the soldier's covenant that we looked at this morning. And the significance for us is knowing that we are not responsible for convicting people of their sins. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Our job is to follow the Holy Spirit's leading. So we can stop worrying about whether our words or actions will do the job in terms of convicting people, and we can simply allow the Holy Spirit to do his part. The second is that the Holy Spirit teaches. In John 14, 26, we're reminded that the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. So in preparation for this day, Daniel and Jessica took time to study, to study the word, to study our doctrines. You know, and in our first doctrine, it says that the scriptures of the Old and New Testament were given by inspiration of God and that they only constitute the divine rule of Christian faith and practice. And we believe that this is true. And so we believe that the scriptures themselves were inspired, that the Holy Spirit gave inspiration to people to write these words that we now have as our Bible. But more than that, we know that when we read the word of God, we need help in interpreting what the word is saying to us. And I believe that is part of the Holy Spirit's job as he teaches us about God's will for our lives. That's a powerful combination. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit equips. In Galatians 5, and 23, we find the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And we are encouraged in Scripture to eagerly seek the gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians, we're reminded uh, that we are equipped with gifts for the common good. That is to say that it is not for personal gain. uh, And we are equipped as the Holy Spirit determines. That is, we are not all equipped the same because we have all been given different callings, Uh, different abilities so that we can complete the purpose that God has given to us and revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, the Holy Spirit empowers. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we're reminded you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. What kind of power, you might ask? Well, in John 14, Jesus said, very truly I tell you, Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. You see, I believe that the power that allows us to do even greater things comes from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So only when we have the Spirit of God living in us can we accomplish God's plan for our lives. So you see, it's only when the Holy Spirit uh, comes in us that we see things like what we're seeing with Daniel and Jessica today. Because it is the Holy Spirit that would have prompted them and said, this is something that they needed to do at this time. And it is only by the power of the Holy Spirit that they can actually fulfill the things that are written in their covenant today. I want to remind you as we close of that covenant, because it is significant. It's a significant calling, uh, and it is a significant task that is before us. And so we find these words, having accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, desiring to fulfill my membership of his church on earth as a soldier of the Salvation Army, I now, by God's grace, enter into a sacred covenant. The first part of that covenant 
is a confirmation of what we believe, our statement of faith, which in the Salvation Army we call our doctrines. And those are all rooted in our scripture, and we heard them in our video this morning. The second part of the covenant, though, speaks to how our lives will be different because of what we believe and how we will live that out. And so I'm going to read that to you now. Therefore, I will be responsive to the Holy Spirit's work and obedient to his leading in my life, growing in grace through worship, prayer, service, and the reading of the Bible. I will make the values of the kingdom of God and not the values of the world the standard for my life. I will uphold Christian integrity in every area of my life allowing nothing in thought, word, or deed that is unworthy, unclean, untrue, profane, dishonest, or immoral. I will maintain Christian ideals in all my relationships with others, my family and neighbors, my colleagues and fellow salvationists, those to whom and for whom I am responsible, and the wider community. I will uphold the sanctity of marriage and of family life. I will be a faithful steward of my time and gifts, my money and possessions, my body, my mind, and my spirit, knowing that I am accountable to God. I will abstain from alcoholic drink, tobacco, the non-medical use of addictive drugs, gambling, pornography, the occult, and all else that it could enslave the body or spirit. I will be faithful to the purposes for which God raised up the Salvation Army, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, endeavoring to win others to him, and in his name, caring for the needy and the disadvantaged. I will be actively involved as I am able in the life, work, worship, and witness of the core, giving as large a portion of my income as possible to support its ministries and the worldwide work of the army. I will be true to the principles and practices of the Salvation Army, loyal to its leaders, and I will show the spirit of salvationism, whether in times of popularity or persecution. That's a whole lot to commit to. And we know this morning that there is no way that we could do these things, that we could live this kind of life in this challenging world that we live in without the power of the Holy Spirit without a power greater than us. And the good news this morning on Pentecost Sunday is that we can celebrate that that power lives within you and I when we come to a knowing knowledge of Christ and ask the Holy Spirit into your life. So this morning, I want to ask you that question. Have you received the Holy Spirit? Does the Spirit of God live within you, empowering you daily to live for Him? If you have not, then this morning, you have an opportunity to do that. If you're struggling with living a life that is pleasing to God, if you find yourself constantly falling short, that may be evidence that you have never truly accepted the gift of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've got this head knowledge of God and of the sinfulness of man, but you've never allowed the Holy Spirit to convict you of your sin and drive you to your knees to to repent to God. Until you do that, do that, you will never receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And until you receive that power, you will be living by your own power which we know is not sufficient, and we will certainly fall short of what we hope to accomplish for God. This morning, I'd like to pray for a fresh anointing for all of us, that God indeed would pour out his spirit again upon his church, upon those who believe and call upon his name. I want to pray that those of you who are, li- who are alive in the spirit would be replenished this morning, that you would receive renewed passion for the work of God and for the salvation of the lost. For those of you who have never received the Holy Spirit or have never felt the power of the Holy Spirit, I want to pray that this morning you would receive the Holy Spirit and more than that, that you would know this power that is at work in your life, that you would never doubt again that the Holy Spirit is alive in you. So let us pray this morning. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you that Jesus didn't just die on the cross. He didn't just rise from the dead. But he sent the Holy Spirit to live with us, to guide us and journey with us daily, to convict and equip and teach us, God, that we might be able to live lives that are pleasing to you. It also reminds us of your love for us and your calling that you've placed on our lives, Lord, that we can sense your presence and sense that you are near to us even when we are alone. And so, God, this morning I pray for all believers. I pray that we would receive a fresh anointing today. We call out that you would send the fire again, the fire of your Holy Spirit. God, for those who have never experienced what it is like to have the Holy, be filled by the Holy Spirit, we pray that today, right now, that in the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will come upon those who cry in your name. Those who say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. We pray that that would be so this morning. God, we thank you that we can come and bow in your name. That, God, we can cry out to you and we can ask of you anything in your name. And as long as it's according to your will, 
God, you will do it. And today I believe that those who cry out to you for the Holy Spirit do so in accordance to your will. So may they experience it today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I pray that you will be blessed today and that you will have experienced the Holy Spirit in these moments and in the days to come that you will be guided by the Holy Spirit to live in the way that God has called you to live. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining us all again today. We end this Pentecost Sunday with another song by William Booth, uh, Send the Fire. And uh, today we're reminded that we should be cry out every day that God would send us a fresh anointing of his Holy Spirit. So join us as we sing.
It has been good to join together. I'm going to close our service this morning with a benediction taken from the book of Ephesians. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, that you may have power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to all the measure of the fullness of God. Amen. Have a great week.